Hey guys, Ben from Back Photography here and today we're looking at a photo shoot I did at 7 in the morning at the beach with model Imogen. Her Instagram will be in the description below for anyone who's interested. The concept behind this photo shoot was to have a warm, summery kind of beach happy shoot and the thing was this particular day it was about 7 degrees Celsius, it was very early in the morning, the water was freezing cold so the challenge for this photo shoot was to get the composition to look warm and happy and summery. So how do you achieve a warm happy summery looking image when it's cold and a little bit dark and dreary? Well the first thing I do is I find shade and that might seem a bit counterintuitive but if you go into the shade everything in the image should be exposed at a similar level and because everything is the same exposure it means that you can boost the exposure in camera to be bright everywhere and when everything's bright it's going to feel like a warm summery day. The second thing you can do is you can increase the temperature, the colour temperature of the entire scene to be a little warmer so yellow tones, orange tones, boost those and you'll have a warmer image. So that's what we did for this shoot. We did also shoot quite a lot of these photos in direct sunlight as well but we found that the softness of light found in the shade was much more aesthetically pleasing for the type of photos we were going for. So let's talk gear. I used a Sony a7R2 camera body. I used a Sigma 50mm f1.4 for the lens, coupled with a Sigma MC11 adapter so I could use my Canon lens on the Sony camera. And that's pretty much it. So let's take a look at how I took this photo here. This shot was taken at a aperture of f1.8, a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second, and an ISO of 125. The reason I shot this at an aperture of f1.8 is because I was trying to create a dreamy, blurry feel to the image and really completely blow out the background and make the focus of the photo Imogen, the subject of the photo. And I used a shutter speed of 1 400th of a second because there was plenty of light. I could really stop down my shutter speed and have a nice fast shutter speed to stop any blur in the image. And I shot an ISO of 125 because it's a nice low ISO uh, so there's no noise in the image and it's a nice, clean, crisp signal coming to the sensor. So let's talk a little bit about the posing of this image. The first thing I noticed about Imogen is she has a really nice slender neck. So we decided to put all of her hair on one side just to sort of showcase that. Then what we did is we got her to face sort of in the opposite direction of the camera and then twist around, not only to accentuate the length and slenderness of the neck, but also to showcase her really nice defined jawline and cheekbones. And I think this really worked quite well in the image. It makes her face nice and slim, makes her neck look nice and long, and that's what we were looking for in this image. One more comment about the posing. I tried to get Imogen's head to be almost completely straight on to the camera. Not quite straight on because we wanted to show um, her nice jawline and cheekbones, but just so we could get both of the eyes in focus. Now, the, her eye on the left, her left, is a little bit out of focus compared to her eye on her right, and that's just because we were shooting at a low aperture of 1.8, but getting her to face sort of straight onto the camera in terms of where her eye's focal plane is really means that you can get nice sharp eyes, and those are the things that I think in portraits are the most important thing to be in focus. So not only are her eyes in focus, particularly her right eye, this means her, having her face straight on towards the camera means that her lips are also going to be in focus, as well as parts of her nose. So it really draws attention as a viewer of the image to her face and particularly to her eyes and lips. So let's jump into the editing process now. I'm in uh, Camera Raw, which is a Photoshop plugin. First thing I did was add some clarity to the entire image just to make the whole scene pop. Then I add some vibrance as well, just to make the scene a bit more punchy and colorful. Next thing I did was drop the highlights just because the background was really quite blown out, as well as dropping the whites just slightly as well to bring back some of the detail in the background. The next thing I did was just using the brush tool, I made the exposures and blacks the lowest possible value they could be just to, to use it as a selection tool so that I can select all the parts of the skin that I would like to remove some clarity from just to smooth out the blemishes and pores that you can see in the skin. 
and then once that's all selected I just remove some of the clarity in her skin just to give a smooth effect to her skin and remove any blemishes. The next thing I did was reset my brush tool and put some clarity and exposure on the brush and then just brushed over the eyes and eyelashes slightly to give a little bit extra sharpness and brightness to the eyes to make them really pop. You don't want to go crazy or you'll give your subject laser beam eyes and I'm definitely guilty of doing that but just adding maybe a fifth of a stop of exposure and a bit of clarity can really help make our model's eyes really pop and look amazing. The next thing I did was I just noticed that in the corner the image was looking a little bit green so I added a bit of yellow and dropped the exposure down a little bit just to make the whole scene warm So I was trying to go for a yellowy warm summery feel to the image and there was still a bit of green in the scene so I went into the hue section of Camera Raw and just changed all the greens to yellow. So that's everything I did in Camera Raw and now let's get into native Photoshop. So next what I did was just got the patch tool, zoomed in onto the skin and just got rid of any of the blemishes that were in her skin. I tried to keep the freckles in there because I thought they were quite nice and really added something to the image. So really what I was doing here was just trying to get rid of anything that looked like a pimple or a scar or anything like that while still keeping all of the little freckles in there. Now you can't really tell, but her neck on the right, that's actually not her neck, that's her hand that I told her to put her hand up through her hair. And because I did that and I were using an aperture of 1.8 in this image, it actually blurred so much that it looks like her neck. So I'm just using the liquify tool here to push it in so it actually looks more like her neck and looks more natural. And now that I've done that, I just decided that, well, maybe I'll just move in the neck on the other side as well and then also just do a bit of posture correction on the side of her back there. So nothing to make her look skinny or anything like that, just to improve the posture and also make the neck look more natural because the hand is sort of making things look a little bit strange just because of where it's placed. And after that what I did, and actually I messed this up a little bit, I had a couple of attempts at making her lips a little bit more red. So pretty much what I did was I went to adjustments, hue saturation, then I boosted everything so I could see what color the computer considers lip to be which is red then I changed my hue of saturation to just change the reds isolated what color her lips were and then boosted those particular colors but as you can see here I went a little bit overboard and her lips do look a little bit too pinky red so I decided well actually I'll just give it another go get rid of that change and then I pretty much just repeated the same steps again but instead of boosting the saturation by 40 or 50 points just boosted it by I think it was 10 or 15 points, something like that, just to keep the lips looking natural, but then give them a little added bump of color. So after that was done, the image is almost ready. The next step was to just increase the colorfulness of Imogen's eyes. She had some really nice blue eyes, and I just thought it would be great to add a little bit more depth and color to those blue eyes, because it was so bright outside, you really couldn't tell how blue they were. So pretty much the same steps that I use on the lips. I tried to isolate what color the eyes were and then make that color stronger, but it turned out her eyes weren't actually blue in the eyes of the computer anyway. Her eyes were a whole bunch of different colors. They were blue, they were yellow, they were green, they were red, everything. So I decided instead I would just boost the master saturation. And as long as you have a selection that's sort of close, it's fine. You can boost the master colors. Just be mindful that you may get a hard line where you have boosted the saturation if you choose to boost every single color, which you can see in this image here. But because her eyes are so small, and these photos are probably just gonna be going on Facebook, it's not too big of a deal. You won't be able to tell in the final image. Just make sure, like when you are improving the clarity and exposure in a model's eyes, not to go crazy with the colors as well, just because you can make the eyes look very unnatural very easily just by adding a little bit too much color to them. So the final thing I did to this image was I went back into Camera Raw and decided I would add a little bit more darkness to Imogen's hair. And this was really just to add a bit of contrast to the image and really make it apparent that there's a big difference between the lightness of her hair and her skin. That just makes the image look more punchy and in my opinion better in general. So I just added a little bit of shadows and I also used the blacks there just to, make, just to show the selection that I was using and I got rid of the blacks 
again. And really all I was doing here was dropping the shadows by about 15 or 20 points, just to make overall her hair a little bit darker. And you can see the difference right there. So that's everything I did to the image. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope you learned something or found it enjoyable. Please leave a like if you did enjoy this video and feel free to subscribe. I'm gonna be posting a lot more content like this in the future. And once again, thank you very much.